far have we gone? Three kilometres. Three? Yes. And it's taken us about, what, three minutes? Something like that. There you, are. you see, James, I told you, we'll be there in no time. This won't last, this sunny sky, smooth snow stuff. Yes, it will. It won't. It will. It won't. But it did last. The sky stayed blue, the ice stayed smooth, and we opened up a huge lead over Team Dog. The ten-year-old that lives inside me, and there's one inside all of us, right now, is just doing cartwheels. I'm going to the pole. I could cry. It's the first time I've told Matty this is only the third time I've had skis on my feet. It's really hard. I know, OK, not to people ski these days, but I grew up in Birmingham. The car had disappeared into the distance, but Matty told me the hair would be unstuck by ice that was too thick or drowned by ice that was too thin and that the tortoise would then take the lead. I wasn't so sure. Oh, hell. <laughs> He is huge. I mean, look at this. This is about twice the size of my mitten. Did you know, according to the ancient Inuit people, for every inch in length of its footprint, it's a foot in its length? That's big. That's that is big. Twice the size of you. And they can smell you from 40 miles away. Should we get back in the car? <laughs> With things going so well for us, I tried to get James to buy into our expedition. I admire Hammond for doing what he's doing. I admire all Arctic explorers. But I think the time has now come for the world to say, let's see how easily we could get to the top of Everest. Let's see how easily we could get to the North Pole. I think we could forge a career as the world's worst explorers. Surprisingly, James was ahead of me on that one. Yes, I'd like a gin and tonic. Can't have a gin and tonic because we're in the Arctic Ocean. I'll make you What? <laughs> You've got gin! I uh have. -huh. And because we're in international waters, there's no drink driving laws. Exactly. But the ice. 